Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. The Atari VCS has become quite the divisive console among gamers. Some people absolutely love it and will defend it to the death no matter what the cost. Other people are a little bit more realistic about the situation and are starting to call into question a few of the practices that Atari VCS is doing, how they're handling this project and what's going to become of it in the future. I've done deep dives on Michael Arts, the head of the project and his background and why it was pretty questionable at the start. I've done deep dives on Uber Strategist, their marketing partner, Mario Kroll, the head of it, which is a very concerning marketing company with how they've handled speaking to the public. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on the Atari VCS, calling everything into question because to be quite honest, that board that they showed looks pretty fake. <laughs> And that's where we're going to start this episode. Atari VCS released an image of the official prototype for the Atari VCS board, the motherboard that would be going into the supposed Atari VCS console. The problem with this board, it's made by a company called Ask PCB. And if you've watched Spawnwave's video discussing this board, he is an excellent teardown specialist who can analyze what a motherboard even is and every part of it, what they mean and even his words say if you plug this thing in I don't think it would fire up anyways looking at what's on it and more importantly what's missing the RAM is not even shown on the board and typically RAM is right in the center there it's missing he said it might be underneath it but most likely it's just not there which is a little bit weird more concerning than anything but the fact that Atari moved forward with this board is interesting but when you do a little bit more research on this Ask PCB, it's a company that basically just makes things to specs. You give them a list of items you want on your motherboard, and they produce a prototype in as quickly as 24 hours. So in reality, this motherboard that they showed off to the public is fabricated. It is meaningless. It holds zero value. The only reason Atari would pay a company to make this is to ease the public pressure. People are coming after them asking for some information, asking for updates, asking for something. And what does Atari do? Uh, let's call a company and throw together a motherboard really quickly and hold it up with the Atari logo on there to let everyone know, hey, we're still working on this thing in the background. We're hard at work. We're trying our best to get it out to you, but we need to be super secretive about everything because, yeah, secrets and stuff. But I got a little bit of insider information regarding this. I've worked in the video game industry for going on seven years now, and I've made a few connections that have dropped some pretty fascinating facts my way. Now, these people would like to remain anonymous, but regardless, here is some pretty damning information regarding the supposed upcoming Atari VCS. Early backers, don't be holding your breath on this thing because it's probably not coming when they said it is. I've spoken directly with hardware manufacturers and console makers to get this information, to pass it along to you, do with it what you will. If Atari were to collect the $3 million via Indiegogo, which they did, that would be required to invest in actually creating the full-blown Atari VCS machine. And if they're going to be doing that, where is the other money going to be coming from to pay the employees, pay for the marketing, pay Uber strategists, which I talked about in a previous video, how much money they're funneling away to them every single month. The product testing, the shipping costs to the early backers, that's going to cost somewhere around the ballpark of 30 bucks just to send one of these boxes to every single house that pre-ordered it. Who's going to eat that cost? Not to mention the games, which Atari has not told us any thing about and no I don't call that marketing puff piece games that's literally signing a contract with a company that already has contracts in place with other manufacturers to put this platform on other consoles including PC and Xbox one so signing a deal with ant online is completely meaningless if anything it should be called into question that they're not even available yet but the Atari VCS is supposed to launch this year but ant online is supposed to launch next year but Atari said that the Atari VCS will be launching with Ant Online, which is a concerning disconnect with the dates right there. According to my source, creating the architecture for a brand new video game console easily costs 
two to three million dollars alone. And that is just for the system architecture of the console. That has nothing to do with the marketing, the molding, the product testing, the shipping, all the exterior factors that they're needing to deal with, and all a whole nother thing I haven't even touched on yet, which is the taxes that they have to pay when they run an Indiegogo campaign. But we'll circle back to that. Right now we need to talk about Rob Wyatt, which was the system architect that they contracted to be the creator of the entire product. They contracted him. They didn't hire him. They contracted him. Keep that in mind too, because that's something that if you're building a console, you don't want to contract the guy that's in charge of setting that up. You want him to be an employee. The guy was the lead engineer on the project and he's gone now. Or at least that's the way it seems when he's off doing his own video game console and running a Kickstarter for that that starts in a couple weeks. It's a bit concerning that nobody is really talking about, but Rob Wyatt, the guy who was supposed to be putting the Atari VCS together before it's even together, is nowhere to be found at Atari right now. Just think for a second, could you imagine if Nintendo or Microsoft or Sony contracted their lead engineers on their projects. That is insanity. Not to mention it was seemingly a one-man operation that was a part-time employee. There's a lot of red flags here, guys, and I'm not even halfway through this. If you're starting up a video game company or a video game console that you're looking to sell to the public, you're going to need, at minimum, 10 full-time engineers, employees with benefits working on the system for typically between two to three years. Two hardware engineers, four firmware engineers, one mechanical engineer, one project manager, one tech engineer, four software OS engineers. And that's just the bare minimum that you'd need to start your own video game system. It's not a cheap endeavor by any stretch of the imagination. When this Indiegogo project went live, a lot of people called it into question because of that one simple fact. No matter how much money this company raised to make their console, they need to find more money from investors or someone else to be able to make this thing become a reality. Because as of right now, how it looks Atari's been spending its money, it's been on marketing, it's been through Uber strategists, it's been on paying off lawsuits, it's been on all the people that are there, Michael Arts and contracting Rob Wyatt, they haven't actually done anything to make a console. You look at the controllers and they're, they're sending those to a third party to make the first party controllers for the system. They're not making them themselves. They're literally contracting the controllers out supposedly. This was outsourced to a third-party company. Who's going to be doing the features where they pair with the console themselves, where they talk to each other, the rumble force feedback, any kind of updates that work in conjunction with the system architecture. It is crazy to think that this is something that's believable and that would actually work going through a third-party company to make first party controllers for a console that doesn't exist. But going back to what a company needs to make an actual product come to life this day and age, you need a lot of people working on a team together. When I went to Intellivision headquarters, I met with a lot of different people that were in charge of a lot of different things, making sure that the Intellivision Amico, which still isn't due out for another year, will come to fruition and be working exactly as they plan it to. Lots of backroom work going behind the scenes that people don't know about to make sure it will be as good as humanly possible. And then when you look at a company like Atari and you're like, who you got working for you guys? And it's Michael Arts, it's Mario Kroll over at Uber Strategist, and it was contracted with Rob Wyatt. And maybe there's like one or two other people behind the scenes that we're not familiar with, but ultimately it's not enough. And doing research for this video, I found watching the entire marketing video that was posted for their Indiegogo campaign had a couple interesting parts to it, mainly the actual employees that they claim to have. Brandon Lynn, user experience design. Joe Moak, mechanical engineering. 
Dana Krieger, industrial design. None of these people show on a LinkedIn profile that they have ever worked for Atari in the first place. You would think if you were in the marketing for a console that you would list on your LinkedIn page that you were an employee, whether full-time or contracted, irregardless of your status, if they're showing you in a video that you would say something about it in your LinkedIn profile. Marcus DJ Wheat Graham, director of Twitch Studios, has nothing to do with Atari. In fact, the only person that talks in the video with the Atari logo next to their name and actually says something about Atari in their LinkedIn is Michael Arts, the marketing guy behind Atari. Makes me question all of these people that show up in the video. None of them even work for Atari. It's all a facade. I've spoken directly with hardware manufacturers and people in the industry. How this works? You can't just order a few consoles. You need to order at minimum 10 thousand consoles so even if they were able to get the price of the vcs in-house down to three hundred dollars with the boxes all the packaging material the instructions the console the controllers the plugs the wires the hdmi cores all that going together assuming that Atari was able to make this console put it together for three hundred dollars they would still have to order ten thousand of these to get them made 10,000 times 300 is three million dollars right there is the indiegogo campaign that's assuming atari doesn't spend any money on marketing which we already know they're doing way too much of right now through uber strategist that's assuming they don't spend any money on lawsuits which we have proof that they've been spending money paying off lawsuits regarding a lot of things surrounding atari sa and that's assuming they don't have to pay anybody working on the console rob wyatt michael arts anybody else behind the scenes is getting a zero dollar paycheck every day right now is that really what's going on behind the scenes here I find that extremely hard to believe i've also had sources tell me directly that they know for a fact that atari is trying very hard to raise money outside of the indiegogo campaign through investors and those investors want nothing to do with atari because this is bad news all around their marketing campaign their online social media presence their entire buzz online surrounding the project is all negative and nobody wants to be associated with these guys not to mention all the failed projects they've had in the past what would make any rational investor feel comfortable giving any sort of money to a project like atari in the state that it's in currently so if you pair all these things together the math just doesn't add up and i know i briefly touched on the packaging earlier but we haven't seen any packaging or boxes or what the actual manufactured final product would look like from Atari. And by the way, at minimum, the packaging costs around $150,000. So that hasn't been done yet, which you think it would be if this product was coming out as soon as the end of 2019. No final product. Hell, we haven't even seen the actual Atari in action yet. We've seen a fake mock-up board that was made overnight by a company that does it ad hoc when you just tell them, hey, this is what I need a board to say, and they make it. That is meaningless. Everything Atari has done is a joke right now. And for people that don't want to see the truth, just do the math. Indiegogo is not considered a donation. It's taxable. They have to pay the taxes on the $3 million that they earn. Not to mention everything that goes into making the console. And oh, by the way, the people you have to pay who are making it along the way. And you can't just slap a bunch of parts together and throw it out there to the public and say, hey, we got our Atari box out there. It's called the Atari VCS. And yeah, it's hackable. And it's Linux. And yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We, we're definitely going to be coming through with this. If I were a backer of this, I would cancel it immediately. However, I've done a video on that too, and canceling this might not be as easy as you think. You have to wait for them to ship the product for you to be able to cancel it, which means that they got your money and there's nothing you can do about it right now. This is a scam, it's fraudulent, and yes, the people behind this project 
If they don't deliver, they should be facing some serious legal consequences and ramifications for basically what amounts to stealing backers' money without the intent of even making anything. They were in over their heads since day one. This product idea was a joke. I don't think they even expected it to go anywhere. They probably expected to scam 10, 20,000 bucks out of people. But when this thing blew up online and it made $3 million from Indiegogo, they were probably equally excited and fearful that the more money they make with this, the more trouble they're gonna be in when they don't produce anything. I don't think they had an intention to produce anything from the get-go. They're not a real video game company. They're not part of the ESA. That's why they couldn't get a booth on the showroom floor at E3. It's why they had to go to a hotel room down the street. It is shady stuff. People in the industry who know what's going on scoff at the Atari VCS because they know for a fact that these guys are a scam, that it's something you need to stay far away from. Bottom line is, they spent their money in all the wrong ways, but because from the get-go they made more than they expected to, they were way in over their head and had no idea what to do with any of it. So the Atari VCS, yes, it's a complete scam. Is it gonna come out? Not anytime soon, and if it does, like I've said before, it's basically going to be a Raspberry Pi that's tossed into a plastic box. It's not going to be what everybody's hopes and dreams and aspirations are. We haven't even seen a boot logo for the screen. We haven't seen any of the actual software even running. We haven't seen the opening screen. We haven't seen the dashboard. We haven't seen any of the games. There is nothing behind the Atari VCS. This is the biggest scam in video game history. And right now, it's all coming to a head. Anyways, I'm going to leave the video right there. Hopefully this answers a few of the questions that people have had as to why I feel like it's a scam, why I don't feel like the Atari VCS will be coming out, and even if it does eventually come out somehow, like next year down the road, it's going to be a shell of the promises that they've made regarding what this console is going to actually entail. I'm going to leave the video right there. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing.